Welcome back to the lab folks. So today we got uh, another mailbag video for you. Um, it's been building up. It's not as, quite as bad as it was before, but let's get started with this. Uh, these mailbag videos tend to be uh, my best videos uh, overall. Ah, okay, so here is a spare tip for my my iron, my Phoenician iron. So it is of the type, the tip that I like. So I just thought I would get one just to have it around as a spare in case something happens. And uh, I'm left without a tip. You never want to be left without a tip. And it seems to fit just fine. Does it turn on? It does. Look at that. Okay, onwards and upwards. Ah, yes. This is just a... Uh... Oh, they got some tape on there. Yes, they do. It's just some crimp on DuPont connectors. Or DuPont style of various, uh, you know, various sizes one pin, two pin, three pin, so forth, and uh, male and female pins allow me to make up some, uh, some custom cables, which I have a need to do once in a while. All nicely housed in a convenient little container. Oh, these are, I think these are screw terminals. Let me have a closer look at these. They're bag within a bag within a bag. It happens frequently. Yeah, these are just uh, 0.1 inch screw terminals. These are handy for making up uh, PC boards where you want to connect something up. So, and um, I'm uh, totally out of them. So it was a good thing I got some more of these as I'm going to need them coming up. All right, this is a bag here that uh, was something else in it for another family member and they didn't want to wait. So <laughs> I opened up, it's just, it's just parts cases, parts boxes, you know the type. Yeah, I put op amps in them, I put uh, transistors in them, uh, what have you. And I, need, I have a need for some more. And they're, they're pretty standard. This one's here, this one here, this one's a, a, a name brand, Airage, and slightly slightly better built than these ones, but I find uh, these ones here do uh, a, an awesomely good job, and they're, I think they're around about half the price of these ones, but they work, they work quite well, and they do what they're supposed to do, and seeing as I'm not, um, you know, I'm not dragging these things around behind a car or something like that. They don't have to be incredibly tough. They just have to work and they do. So these ones here, like I said, are a little bit tougher. The plastic a little bit thicker, you know, a little bit heavier duty. But you know, if you're just going to put parts in it and pick it up and open it up once, uh, twice a year, then uh, these ones are perfectly fine for that. Ah, yeah, just potentiometers. I'm running low on those as well. So I think I got uh, I got two lots of these, I'm pretty sure. Um, 10K and 100K, if I'm not mistaken. They're just your average um, Chinese potentiometer, and they come with these nice aluminum knobs. So that's why I got these particular ones. Just a linear taper potentiometer. It comes with all the hardware. Better have them on hand. No, some, I notice sometimes that some uh, YouTubers don't leave any links. You know, they'll show you something. A big Clive is great for that. Like, he'll show you something very, very interesting, and he won't leave a link to that thing. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's, it's, it's tough to find what he has shown you. I mean, it, it, he shows it to you, you like it, you want to get one, play around with it or to use it. And, uh, yeah, I wish he'd leave links. I've, I've asked him to do that before, and, you know, he'll, he'll like my... 
um, comment and give me a heart. So I think he probably should have somebody doing that, go through every comment and like it and give it a heart. But he never, uh, he never acts on it. This is just another little case. Uh, these ones are, are, are great for, for really, really, really small parts. So this one I have, uh, I'm going to put some metric hardware in it that I use all the time. So I'll put in three millimeter, 3.5 millimeter screws of various lengths and possibly standoffs. And so there's a number of compartments here. You can put quite a bit of stuff in it. Yeah, this feels like more potentiometers to me. And these is 5K. Here we go. Yeah, there we go. more potentiometers with knobs. Ah, this is power resistors. Yep. 5 watt, 0 0.02 ohms. All right, now we're going on to some more interesting stuff. So I've got this here. This, this thing here I paid for myself. I bought this. And I think because the order number and the shipping information they send me. I think I know what it is. It's from Fernisi. And it's well packaged. As usual, the, the stuff that they send is usually very, very well packaged, I must say. <clears throat> and what this is, this is the uh, Fernisi ST90 iron holder, and it's a stand. It's a soldering iron stand. Now it's a little bit, it looks a little bit different now that I see it. It looks a little bit different than the one they show uh, on their website that I ordered. It's got a, a bigger casing around it. It's nice, it's nice, it's got a good feel, a good weight to it. And it's for this iron here. It's, it's, it seems to be very well constructed. It's heavy duty. It's got, it comes with a fairly decent sponge. I do use sponges, as I've already mentioned before in a recent video. Comes a little tray for the sponge. It's really well built. It's got this little adjustment knob here on the side. You can set it to whatever angle you want between here and here and uh, clamp it in place. Nice tray. Yeah, very well designed, very well made overall. Now this next item here, I'm going to take it out of this box, but I'm not going to uh, take it out of its other box if it has one until another video. This is going to have its own video. This is something um, Fernisi sent me. So I guess I've been, you know, reviewing some of their stuff online and I've been working with them, uh, working out problems with some of their stuff. So they said, hey, do you want one of these to try out? So I said, sure, send it to me. So I, uh, being quite upfront about it, I got this for nothing. They're not paying me to do the review, and uh, they said, go ahead and review it whatever way you want. So this is one of these intelligent color screen multimeters. It's the DMT-99. I've seen some other reviews of it online, but I've never had uh, one of these smart multimeters before. I've never had one in my hands. So I, uh, I'm eager to try and find out whether or not I like the concept. I'm very much, you know, a traditional meter kind of guy. So yeah, I'm excited to, to get this one opened up and check it out. So it's got, uh, I'll give you all the information here about it on the back in the two main languages, which would be Chinese and English. Yeah, it's got live checking. It's got uh, non-contact voltage checking, resistance capacitance frequency, DC voltage, AC voltage, DC current, AC current. And I believe it has a recording function too. So it's got kind of a little uh, oscilloscopy thing in it, which I'm eager to look at as well. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to review this probably, uh, probably in my next video. So uh, come back uh, for my next video and uh, we'll open this up and uh, have a, a quick look at it. Okay, guys, well, that's all I really have for you today. Just a, a small um, mailbag video. The, the, the main reason I wanted to get into this is because I need some of those parts that we uh, saw earlier in the video. So that's why I said, Alice, go ahead and do this. Uh, and uh, that way I can get those parts out and get on with a project. Oh, you know, there's one other thing I wanted to show you. This is pretty amazing. So this here, it's a stenograph keyboard. 
And uh, they wanted me to, to, first of all, change the battery on here. So it had a little CMOS battery, which had gone down to zero volts. And I've already unsoldered that, and I'm going to put in a, a little socket so that they can replace the battery themselves in the future. And then there was a battery pack over here that they wanted me to replace as well. So that's all fine and dandy. And uh, so here's, here's my, my question to you guys. So this is a very simple little device. It's got a single little microcontroller on it and a little battery control chip and a Bluetooth module on it. It's also got a socket here for an SD card and so forth. It's got a USB connector on the lane over here. It's a relatively simple little device. That's it. That's the, there's nothing else on it, right? And uh, it's got a little reset switch here, which you can get uh, in through a hole on the back. But other than that, that's it. I looked this up. Now, this is an older model. Uh, they don't actually make this particular model anymore. And they only make one. If you go over to Stenovations, I, I believe they only make one. It's still called the Lightspeed. I think now it's called the Lightspeed 2 or the Lightspeed Plus or something like that. S these go for about, the, like the new model goes for about 10,000 US dollars. I was kind of shocked by that, uh, but you know what? I, you know, it's it's only it's only pulling out a battery, and you know I, I have to actually make a, a, the, the battery over here because the the manufacturer of the battery is no longer around, and it's a, it's a particularly strange little arrangement of nickel metal hydride. Uh, so I have to make the battery here, but that you know that's not going to take very long. So I just charged them my minimal charge. Should I charge my minimum charge or should I be charging something more commensurate with what the apparent value of something like this is? I mean, because I, I would be willing to bet if he sent it back to Stenovations, he wouldn't be getting those two batteries changed for 130 bucks. I'd be willing to bet that he'd probably pay more like 1500 or $2,000. I've, I've had a discussion with other people and they said, oh, you're, you're being silly. You're, you, you should charge not what the job is worth, but what the product is worth. You should charge according to that. But I don't believe so. I think I'm just giving my minimum labor charge, which is usually one hour, and it's not going to take me much more than an hour to finish this. And the, the cost of the parts, which I, you know, I, I mark them up about 25% or so, cover my time in doing the ordering. And, but that's it. So uh, let me know, guys. Uh, what do you think? Uh, should I, instead of charging my minimum charge of it. Should I be charging a lot more because this thing is worth $10,000? And that's incredible. I, it's amazing they don't have any competition. Like, what do you suppose the cost of this thing is to make? They charge that kind of price because they can. And uh, that's the argument some of my friends were giving me. You should charge a lot more because you can. Anyway, I would be interested to hear what you guys have said. Thanks for coming out to join me today, guys. I really appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video when I uh, have a look at this little meter here from Fernisi. And other than that, bye-bye.